Okay, so we have question number six. Just trying to cement our understanding of the decision-making techniques. And the question reads, as I quote, consider the payoff table below, which shows decision alternatives, uh, D1, decision two, and decision three, that a company is faced with under three different states of nature. States of nature number one, number two, and the states of nature number three, the state of nature number three. Okay, so on, on top here, you have the first row that has got the states of nature. And I did indicate that the states of nature, the investor does not have the power over them or the decision maker does not have the power over them, yeah? So you just accept them the way how they are. So in short, the states of nature are fixed. Is that clear? So the states of nature are that fixed. Then the first column, you have the options that the person has, okay? The options, so they can make the first decision two and decision number three. Those are the options. The last one, you have the probabilities. So understand that when you're now asking to determine the appropriate decision that the company should make using the following approaches, optimistic approach, which is max, max approach, you can't just say, oh, decision one, all right? and then you keep quiet. You need to do a little bit of mathematics, okay? So the question of the day is that given this pair of table, what decision would a person or a decision maker choose? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. And Following the same lines, we can now see that um, we have probabilities added, the last row. So get it from me. Whenever you're using optimistic approach, which is also called max-max approach, and when you're using the conservative, conservative approach, which is the max mean approach, or the mean max regret approach, you do not need the probabilities. Is that clear? Come again. You do not need to put the probabilities into consideration when you are uh, examining the decision-making using the optimistic approach, the conservative approach, and the regret uh, approach, the minimax regret approach. You got it, eh? So in short, you do not take into account the, what, the probabilities, okay? Then you will, Take into account the probabilities when you are dealing with the expected monetary value approach. Is that clear? So you only use the probabilities when you're dealing with the expected monetary value approach. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. For that very reason, we can now have Question number one, optimistic approach. How do you go about optimistic approach? Remember what we go about, how do we do, how to go about uh, the max max approach. So uh, let me just write the table. Here is the table that we have. We have the states of nature number one, states of nature number two, state of nature number three, right? Uh, a decision number one, decision number two, and decision number three. 
you also have probabilities, but first, uh, when you're dealing with the first uh, max max approach, you don't need the probabilities. We have 35, 60, 16. So 35, 60, 16. And we have 21, 85, 62. 21, 60, 21, 85, 62. 21, 85, 62. And the last uh, decision roll, 40, 15, 32. It is 40, 15, 32. Yes. So you, you leave the probabilities in the meantime, okay? When you're using max, max approach, you don't need the probabilities. That's what I said. So what do we do now from here? So when you're ever you're moving the max, max approach, you move along the decisions, isn't it? I said you move along the what? The decisions, or you move along the what? The options, eh? You choose the highest number along the options. So the options are these decisions that you are making. Not along the states of nature. The states of nature, you don't have control over them, okay? So choose which one has the, which one is the highest number when you follow the first row? Sixty. Sixty. Get to understand if the decisions were on top, you'd have done, you'd have, you'd have been moving like this vertically, like the example that we had last time. But now the decisions or the options see, are horizontal. That's why we are moving horizontal. That's very, very important to notice. Then so, 85. So the main and, thing that, hello, sir. Yes, madam. Yes, I want to know. So the main thing to follow is uh, the decision making. Eh? Yes, you follow the options that are there as you are deciding. Those, those options. No, or just options. Okay. Yeah, the decision making options that you have. Last time oh. we had the the options we had was to invest in agriculture, in, in mm -hmm. mining, tourism. Those are options. But okay, there okay. were some states of nature which we had no control over, and that was demand, the change in demand. That was mm -hmm. high demand, low demand, and media. So those we, we, don't, we never had, you know, an investor doesn't have control over them. Those we call oh. them the state of nature, the scenarios, okay? The general way to use the scenarios. The scenarios, you don't have uh, control over them. Is that clear? Clear, sir. Okay. So you move along the options when you're using max max approach, which is also called the uh, what uh, optimistic approach, right? So max max approach is about to first choosing the minimum from the options. I we have oh sorry the maximum. Then after the maximum, you also have to choose the another T maximum. First, you get the minimum, then the maximum from the minimum. So our maximum is which one? Our maximum, our maximum is what? 85. It's 85. So therefore, a person will follow which decision? Decision number two, under max maxi approach. Is that clear? Yes, sir. So, is there any question? From anyone? There is no question. No. I want you to pass very well in math and give me distinctions. Before I retire my target, is to produce 1,000 A plus in business, mathematics, and statistics, then I'll retire. That's the goal. 
By the grace of God, if I can make those first within two years' time, then I can retire teaching business, <laughs> math and statistics. It shall come to pass. <laughs> yes. Be part of them at least from the time I started teaching, at least I already have 85. So I just, but you know, you see the goal is you're still going. But if you can give me more this year, then I'll be happy. 85 out of what? 85 A plus. Like my A, Nipenda Chema A plus, not my, yeah. I mean, everyone from the time I started teaching people like who got an A plus that I trained, I marked them. So at least they're at 85 already in total. So I still have a long way to go, you see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. It is well, at least you shorten my distance by all of you getting A plus. <laughs> all right, let's go to to the to the other approach which one is which the conservative approach the max mean approach maxi maxi max mean Minimax. oh max mean not mini max eh? uh question number two you've seen it yes Six sir. two it's a max mean the way how you read it, you remember, I said you start from the right going to the left, isn't it? Yes, sir. Oh, Max. So we are, going, we are going to choose the, the minimum, right? We are still following the rule, by the way. We are still following the rules. Following the rules. Which one is the minimum? 35. Six. Sorry, 16. 16. Here we have 21 and we have 15, right? Then from this, we choose the maximum, right? That's the conservative approach. It will still be decision number what? Number two. So if you don't know what to do, you may start saying, ah, this is number two. Oh, let me just guess. Let me put decision one and decision two, three. <laughs> is that clear? Yes, sir. Any question from anyone? Hmm. All right. If the maximum mean approach, the conservative approach is okay, then now we can look at what is called what? The regret approach, which is called the minimax, right? The minimax approach. Many max. Mm. What did I say about this one? How do we create the payoff table? You, you need to create the, the regret table, sorry. You need to create the regret table. But when you're creating the regret table, I said you move along what? This set of options, you move along the scenarios, isn't it? Right? You move along the, the scenarios, isn't it? Scenario number one, you check the highest. Which one is the highest in the first scenario? Forty. Forty is the highest. So to form a regret table, you say 40 minus 40. You get it, right? Eh? 40 minus that, 40 minus that. Is that clear? Did you get that? Yeah. Mm -mm. No, sir. 
you check when you move along the scenario, you check which one is the big number. Then no, okay. subtract all these entries from the biggest number in that scenario. No, me, I was thinking of picking 85. No, like you are moving along the scenarios, like the, this scenario number one. In mm. scenario number one, in that row, uh, that column alone. Oh, you don't pick the second or the third? Uh -uh. Like we are, we are following the scenarios one by one. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So in the first scenario, we have 40. So down we have zero, right? 40 minus 40 is zero. 40 minus 21 is what? 19. 19, thank you. Now 19. Then 40 minus 35, obviously this is five, isn't it? Then you go to the second what scenario. Yeah. Following the second scenario, which one is the biggest number? 95. Mm -hmm. So it is 85 minus 15, 85 minus 85, 85 minus 6. Right? So 85 minus 85 is 0, right? 85 minus 60. What is 85 minus 60? Should it be 25, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is 25. So you record it, 25. Then here, 85 minus 15. Should it be 70, yeah? Thank you, I have 70 here. You come again to the second scenario. Obviously, you have 62 minus C. Sixty two minus sixty two is zero, right? Sixty two minus thirty two. Is that yeah? Mm -hmm. And it's 62 minus 16. What is 62 minus 16? 46. 46. Wow. You have 46. And so, is there any question on how to form a regret table? This is a regret table. Surely, you can no. find it challenging. No. It's straightforward. <laughs> math is made easy. You've seen there is nothing to fear in math. Have you seen that, right? Mm -hmm. Now, from here, you move along the decisions now. So this approach is called minimax approach. Mini what? Eh? Minimax. Minimax. Now, minimax entails We have to choose the maximum in each of them, yeah? These decisions, which one is the highest decision? The, or like what, or in decision number one, what is the highest pair? 46. 46. 19, 46. 19, 
and 70. Is it? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. And then, after choosing the maximum, what follows next? You choose the minimum, right? You're following? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, which decision are we going for using the regret approach? We are still going for decision number two. You see now they are saying it was <laughs> very, very interesting. As was D2, D2, D2. And you would not tell if you don't know what to do. And to choose decision what, sir? 19? Decision two. Why not decision one? First no, maximum, are... maximum it's 70, not so. Mm -hmm. Then the minimum, is it not supposed to be 19? The minimum is 19, we're decision two. 19 is in decision two. The decisions oh, are okay, the ones. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. You got it? Yes, sir. Any question from anyone? No, sir. All right. If they don't have a question, sir, it is well. Then you can move on to the last part where we have the other approach of decision making, which is called the monitor expected value. Monitor expected value. Okay. For that, we even have the probabilities. Putting numbers, we have 35, 60, 16. And we have 21, 85, 62. Then we have 40, 15, 32. And we have the probabilities 0 0.25, 0 0.65, and 0 0.1. I've just copied first. Now the question is, determine the appropriate decision that the company should make using expected monetary value approach. The expected monetary value approach. This is also called making decisions under risk, okay? Under probabilities, under risk, under uncertainties. How do you make decisions when subjected to what to uncertainties mm -hmm. how do you make decisions subjected to uncertainties number one you will you are going to to multiply by the probabilities each number like uh, for the, let's start with the first decision. So for the first decision, it will be 35 times 0 0.25 plus what? Twenty-one times 0 0.25. Uh, we are going, we are following the decision. So it oh, will be okay. 15, times 0 0.65 plus what? 16 
times 0 0.10. What do you find? Use your calculator now. Hello. Can now use your calculator? What are we finding? You can combine the calculators. I don't have a calculator. 49.35. 49.35. Mm -hmm. You can do for the second one. So for the second decision, you, you multiply the same probability times the 21. The same probability times the 85, right? The same probability times the 62. Mm -hmm. What do we get? Uh, sixty six point seven. Sixty six point seven. And we go for the last one. Forty. Uh, fifteen. And the thirty-two. Uh, 22.95. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. Okay. So 22.95, right? Then from here again, we choose the what? The biggest. The biggest will still be what? Decision number what? Two. Two. Now, don't take it that it shall always be the same decision. Uh -uh. I think you saw last the time that decisions differ, options differ. This is just coincidental. Okay. It is just coincidental that the decisions is just one one decision from top up to down. <laughs> you can't you can you can't believe this in an exam. You can start thinking you have made a mistake. Is that clear? Yes, sir. <laughs>